interested to know the origin story of Pahora. We pioneered uh, legal recruitment in 2007. Uh, at that time, we were part of a, an organization called Rainmaker. We were the first ones to conduct the bar exam uh, in India. In 2011, we decided to separate from Rainmaker as we were the, the legal recruitment space was booming in India and we wanted to create a separate track for ourselves. First logical step was to come out with a, a brand name. And we arrived at the word Bagura. Uh, why Bagura? Because Bagura was a coined term. We took the verb from Baruna, which is the early Vedic god of law, sky, rain. Uh, and we also took Ahura from Ahura Mazda, which is the Zoroastrian supreme god. And we combined them to create Bagura, uh, which is uh, which we thought was a, an exciting, uh, you know, way to name an organization. So if you could walk us through all the offerings that Pahura really had. We've gone beyond the, the legal domain. Now we have very strong practices that looks into uh, compliance, policy and tax recruitment. So these are separate divisions which are now focused and going deeper into uh, the, those recruitment activities. In addition to that, we have a very strong board search and advisory practice called Onboard. Uh, we also, through our sister entity called Council, like uh, we have got involved into alternate staffing model. Then we have a navigator division which caters into law students. So we help from counselling and helping them into uh, getting their dream job. Uh, an initiative called Relaunch, where we help women professionals who have taken a break to come back to work. We have the Vagura Consulting, where, which I head and I have a, 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 a two-member team uh, based in uh, Berlin and uh, Bangalore. Tell us all about Legal Tech Consulting. Why is it that at this stage you decided to sort of initiate that division? Uh, so, in short, in legal tech, we are focusing right now on three aspects, which is uh, uh, product discovery through our legal tech tracker uh, uh, initiative. We are helping our clients identify and also implement the right legal technology tools. And the third area is we are getting into upskilling, which is helping lawyers or non-lawyers be introduced into uh, the legal technology concept, so that it's not an alien concept in, in that sense. Just in terms of uh, projects that you may be looking at or the kind of clientele you're looking at, do you have something on your mind for the legal tech consultancy division? Right now, our focus is to um, help organizations which are very early in their digital transformation journey uh, to kind of start in that process, I would say. Uh, so right now we are working with a number of growth organizations as well as uh, high listed organizations because these are two extremes that we see needs uh, a little bit of hand holding. Maybe uh, explain for our audience uh, what digital transformation really means. Transformation journey in a, in a law firm or a, in an in-house legal department is all about first identifying your existing process. Once you have identified your existing process, identifying those activities which are essential. Transformation is understanding what you need, what, what needs, what is value for the organization and those activities which are not value at using technology to automate is one way to look at the, the digital transformation. Maybe tell us what has been the most exciting or the most challenging project you probably worked on and um, what were your learnings from it? Strategic uh, uh, consulting has been the most challenging. We got an opportunity to work with a, a corporate legal department uh, from the internet sector. Now the, the organization had international aspirations, so they were going global with the product and so on. Now the GC who's been running the, the, the ship for three plus years wanted to reinvent the legal department. So, so we helped the general counsel understand how some of the large tech organizations, global tech organizations have structured their legal departments and why they have structured in that way and what works and what doesn't. So what we did over there was to have conversations with the business team, with the sales team, with the tech team to figure out how can legal be a business enabler ended with us making a presentation to their board of directors and the, uh, the, the the committees in terms of what legal should look like. Also understand that Bahura has a fellowship, tell us a little bit about it. So fellowship was our way of being able to attract those multi-competence, multi-dimensional talent who are there in the space 
who may not want to be part of a uh, an organization with its own you know uh, tracks going on but wants to create a separate track for themselves provide them support in terms of people market access uh, the data that they need and at the same time just opening up uh, you know any kind of obstacle that would be there in their way in order for them to achieve that idea before we jump into the consulting side of things can you maybe break down legal operations for our audience first? in bahura we like to see legal offices building a core capability within your legal department which enables you to run a legal department like how you run a business the biggest role of value that the legal ops mindset does for a legal department is to bring the their customer experience to the, the core activity at the same time when you think about a successful business transparency and trust is also a very important parameter that's another area where legal ops can provide more support to the general counsel which is do you think are the new emerging roles and opportunities in the legal industry uh, right now there's a lot of uh, uh, thought leadership happening in the international market which we see india also being influenced but at the same time we're seeing some very unique roles coming in the market like for instance legal data analyst roles where legal tech roles uh, legal tech companies are uh, in the in the space to hire so we are seeing some very interesting roles coming with not just domestic legal tech players but also international tech players where uh, integration of business and legal is going to be a a, a new uh, aspect because then like i mentioned legal ops which is not just looking at okay this is the legal ops ceo but there are different aspect of it that can be brought in uh, policy roles uh, like i mentioned we are now into tax compliance and policy and these are some of the interesting roles which are coming out in the thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview with uh, prolog today Hi, hi, Shreya. Nice to meet you, and uh, looking forward to this interaction. Great. So, for everybody who's tuned in, Abala is the head of consulting at Bahura. Bahura is India's biggest legal recruitment firm at the moment, um, and they do a lot of other things also, which we will discuss in detail in this interview. So, before we sort of step into what Bahura really does, right? I'm very interested to know the origin story of Bahura. How did Bahura? really start what was the idea behind it and uh, also the name right if you can walk us through why it's called bahura as well so we pioneered uh, legal recruitment in 2007 uh, at that time we were part of a, an organization called rainmaker which in addition to legal recruitment was also doing training education um, and other activities like we were the first ones to conduct the bar exam uh, in india In 2011, we decided to separate from Rainmaker as we were the the legal recruitment space was booming in India, and we wanted to create a separate track for ourselves. Um, and uh, and that's how the 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 idea uh, came about. While we were looking at the the brand, uh, the first logical step was to come out with a a brand name. Uh, we didn't know what the name should be, but we had three principles in mind. One. is that uh, we wanted the name to communicate our purpose which is to help lawyers find direction and uh, you know do good work we wanted a name that reflects our indian origin uh, that that's something that we were very particular about and third we wanted a name that has some connection with rainmaker and also our focus which is the legal domain so keeping these points in mind uh, we were evaluating de- different names in with a, with the help of a consultant and we arrived at the word bahura uh why bahura because bahura was a coined term we took the verb from varuna which is the early vedic god of law sky rain um, and we also took ahura from ahura mazda which is a zoroastrian supreme god and we combined them to create bahura uh, which is uh, we, which we thought was a an exciting uh, you know way to name an organization uh when this name was suggested there was an instant connect because primarily it checked all the boxes that we were looking for we did realize that it's going to be a challenge because uh, we had to put a lot more effort in explaining out into the world what we mean what we stand for but on the other side what we realized was that it was a fantastic conversation starter 
uh, be it with the domestic clients, but also with the international clients. Like international clients find it difficult to read sometimes, but uh, it just made it a conversation starter. Anyone we meet, the first question we used to get asked is, what does it mean? And then we used to talk about, you know, uh, all the, the philosophy that we have, the principles, the values, and that kind of made it into a, a great conversation starter. Great. Um, so, of course, we all know, right, that Bahura is big on legal recruitment, but it also does a lot of other things. Um, so, if you could walk us through all the offerings that Bahura really has. So, even with uh, legal recruitment, we have now gone beyond the, the legal domain. Now, we have very strong practices that looks into uh, compliance policy and tax recruitment. So these are separate divisions which are now focused and going deeper into uh, the, those re recruitment activities. In addition to that, we have a very strong board search and advisory practice called Onboard, uh, which is India's first specialist non-executive search uh, and consulting practice. Uh, we also, through our sister entity called Counselect, uh, we I have got involved into alternate staffing model. So right now, Counselect is looking into helping organizations hire lawyers on a short-term project basis, so on secondments. But this is a very exciting space for us, and there is a lot that is going to come out of Counselect in the in the coming years, especially the alternate and innovative staffing models and operating models in that that in that space. Then we have a navigator division, which caters into law students. So we help from counseling and helping them into uh, getting their dream job. So that, that's a, a separate division within Bahura. We also have a, uh, an initiative called Relaunch, where we help women professionals who have taken a break to come back to work. And we help them through mentorship act, uh, activities as well as through opportunity identification. And finally, we have the Vagura Consulting, where, which I head and I have a, 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 a two-member team uh, based in uh, Berlin and uh, Bangalore. Uh, so under Vagura Consulting, we provide three types of services. Uh, one is market intelligence and analysis, where we provide market trends and pattern reports to a client so that they can understand what's happening in the market and at the same time, stay ahead of that curve. So like, for instance, uh, let's say you are a law firm partner. We help you with market reports where you can understand the talent markets, where we provide data on compensation, how the talent is thinking about uh, this market, where you know what are the, what are their aspirations, the motivation, in order for the law firm to conduct or create a great and a robust talent strategy program. Uh, we also do similarly for in-house legal departments, again, in the areas of compensation, uh, market reports around talent analysis, how organizations are structured, legal departments are structured. So we provide a lot of market data on, on that side. So one on one side, where market data is all about what's happening out in the market, we also use this data to advise our clients in order to structure themselves better. So that is our second division within Bahura Consulting, which is the strategy consulting. So again, on law firms, we help them to one with the partnership structure, uh, with growth opportunities, where we kind of help them identify what is the trends and the pattern that we see on the business side of things so that we become an advisor. And at the same time, we come out with action points, which they can implement it. On the in-house side, we help general counsels in setting up their operating structure, the sourcing strategy, uh, how, uh, you know, advice on how legal technology is transforming the industry. So we provide a lot more on advisory aspects over there. The third division in consulting is the legal tech group that we have formed, um, which personally is an area that I'm most excited about, also because it's the newest entrant in our consulting service. So, um... Tell us all about legal tech consulting and um, why is it that at this stage you decided to sort of initiate that division? So uh, the conversation has been happening since 2015. Um, so legal tech uh, has been, an like I mentioned, a high interest area for us. But we were not sure in terms of what role the market wants us to play in this regard. 
So what we undertook was a number of surveys, like one, we conducted a GC survey. Uh, we also conducted a, a piece on how legal technology is currently used by uh, in-house legal department. We also have a great market access. So we started talking to a lot of general counsels in terms of what role would they like us to play rather than us figuring out a role and then going into the market. There were a couple of uh, areas that we identified as problem statement that came out. Number one being uh, that product discovery was an issue. There were exciting new age founders who were coming with some beautiful products out there, but there were not a, a centralized place where a general counsel can go and see what are the tools, read a little about those tools and so on. So our first step was product discovery that we wanted to tackle. And so we came out with a, a page called the Legal Tech Tracker, where as a team, we kind of bring in all the information, all the mapping that we have done on the legal tech onto a centralized database, and thereby uh, you know, simplifying this uh, discovery process. So Legal Tech Tracker is now live. It's on the beta stage, but it's an area that we would be constantly developing upon. The second was where... Uh, where general counsel said that yeah being aware of products is uh, good but is there an advice that we can provide in terms of which would be the best product for them keeping their use case in mind and also at the same time uh, providing assistance in implementation because otherwise this entire burden is falling onto the 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 lawyers who are within the department and this needs a change management philosophy and concept and, and an approach that needs to be brought in so that's the second role that we play with regard to legal tech, where we not just identify the right tool, but we also put the wheels in motion into getting this implemented into different phases and so on. The third area which came again uh, uh, when we did a report with BMU Munjal uh, University, uh, we looked into two dimensions. One was what would be the next generation uh, uh, you know, lawyers' e expectations be with regard to skills and competence. We realized that the next generation lawyers needs to be, needs to move away from being an I-shaped professional. That, be, that means that being a subject matter expert in their knowledge area to having additional skills, which is, uh, you know, growing in demand. It's in, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in demand. So what we did was over there is that we want to get into the upskilling uh, side of things. So with Lawyers Learn, we are coming out with legal technology focused courses where we talk about the evolution of legal tech and we are also introducing different tools out there so contract management compliance management odr so these are some of the tools that we are introducing over there so that be a lawyer or a non-lawyer this is a great way for them to get introduced into the space in legal tech we are focusing right now on three aspects which is uh, uh, product discovery through our legal tech tracker uh, uh, initiative we are helping our clients identify and also implement the right legal technology tools and the third area is we are getting into upskilling which is helping lawyers or non-lawyers be introduced into uh, the legal technology concept so that it's not an alien concept in, in that sense that sounds very comprehensive, Pana. Um, so uh, just in terms of uh, projects that you may be looking at or the kind of clientele you're looking at, do you have something on your mind for the legal tech consultancy division? So right now, our focus is to um, help organizations which are very early in their digital transformation journey uh, to kind of start in that process, I would say. Uh, so right now we are working with a number of growth organizations as well as uh, high listed organizations because these are two extremes that we see needs uh, a little bit of hand holding. Growth organizations primarily because their business models keep changing on a day-to-day -day basis. So you need an agile legal department which is able to move or transform itself into that area. And legal technology can be uh, a great way of building that customer experience that they want. On the listed organizations, and here we are not talking about MNCs, but these are organizations which are traditional in the space, so they could be in the areas of manufacturing or traditional sectors in that sense, uh, where we find that the, the, the way that the legal service delivery is done is very manually driven. Uh, however, by bringing compliance management, contract management, litigation management uh, program, it's adding more value to your uh, legal department in, in that sense.
um uh, got it and um okay so i have a very fundamental question right everybody talks about digital transformation can you just maybe um uh, explain for our audience uh, what digital transformation really means so digital transformation uh, there are i would say we started uh, during our research we started realizing there are a lot of misconceptions out there one misconception being that a digital transformation journey always has to start with a product uh, or a software uh, as core what we realized is uh, in a legal department where lawyers uh, you know the the kind of knowledge that they have the understanding of the process that they have a digital transformation journey in a in a law firm or a in an in-house legal department is all about first identifying your existing process once you have identified your existing process identifying those activities which are essential because that's what you are in the in the organization for but they are not value add which means that they are not activities which is generating any form of revenue or they are not for, you know they are not creating any kind of a uh, tangible value for your organization like for instance let's say uh, there are is an organization where on a day to day basis there are 300 ndas that needs to be generated now let's assume that uh, a lawyer takes their time in going through each of these ndas and manually starting to generate those documents that's required now we have documented like this is essential there is no one who's going to deny that these ndas are not an important document but at the same time a lawyer sitting for 300 minutes and creating 300 separate documents is not a value add for the organization so a digital transformation is understanding what you need what what needs what is value for the organization and those activities which are not value add using technology to automate is one way to look at the the digital transformation journey got it and uh, since you're talking about digital transformation right what do you think are the main challenges uh, that any organization or even a department sort of faces when they're starting out on that entire journey so the first challenge a uh, mistake organizations do is what i mentioned earlier which is they start their digital transformation journey with the purchase of a software application which we have found it to be not the right way to do uh, because placing the cart before the horse is trying to fit your requirements to the tool rather than the tool accommodating your needs mm -hmm. uh, so instead what we have seen creating high probability of success is where the legal department first focus on like i mentioned identifying the current process flow identifying the inefficiencies in that process flow because when you are thinking about your existing process you are thinking about your existing realities but a tool or you know a digital transformation will create a new reality for you so visualizing a future state where these inefficiencies have been taken care of then building your requirement list on that basis is a very critical step uh, that we see happening then you should be bringing the the product evaluation over there which then looks at your existing requirements you look at the features which the product have and you're creating a matchmaking uh, you know interface over there and that by choosing the right tool if you don't do it you're bringing the tool the tool would say that this is the process that you need to follow whereas your internal realities would be completely different over there so that's the first uh, challenge that we see the second is that we do see most departments following a top down approach um, so where Uh, a senior in the system which could be a general counsel or a head legal uh, get introduced to a system uh, they they tend to get impressed by the system and then they kind of uh, give the required approvals for that to get implemented but what we realized is and especially because we are coming from a consulting background what we realized was uh, that it's important for you to um, also get your not just the executive groups buy in but it's also important to get your working groups buy in so in the interventions that we have been doing our conversations have not been only with the seniors in the system but we have also been talking to the legal counsel the senior legal counsel who form that operating core they are the people who actually convert your inputs to your decide output so for instance like contracts and so on so we speak to them we try to understand that where they feel technology can add value to their life because if that buy in is not there you're going to just implement a solution but the adoption is going to be an issue 
Got it. And um, just in terms of digital transformation journeys, right? Um, and I'm just going to break this question down into three, four parts. What do you think are the lowest hanging fruits in your experience? Um, for let's say a small law firm or a boutique law firm. Uh, the lowest hanging fruit would be, I mean, if, if I'm talking about a, a, a general corporate practice in a, in a law firm, the, the lowest hanging fruit would be to centralize your intake or your request that comes in. Because at this point, if you notice, be it an m and transaction or your general corporate activities, there is a lot of usages of emails where typically a client would reach out to a firm use, using their relationship manager, which in most cases would be a partner uh, level professional. An email goes out, that email gets then forwarded to your team to kind of create that output that you need. But what we have seen to be one of the big issues is that the, the person who needs to convert into an output doesn't have all the necessary information. So one of the interventions that we did in that level was, can we uh, formalize that, uh, you know, the request input? So we created into a digital form, which the partner can fill or your client can fill, where the necessary information that is required for you to generate that document is already pre-filled. And that gets in you know, uh, converted into a, a software, which is like a contract management software, because over there, then the, the person who's converting like a senior associate or the associate have all the information that they need to create. So there is no back and forth that happens. So that for me is a, a no brainer because there is a lot of inefficiency in the system where an associate or senior associate sends a draft, then they take and they kind of review it and say that, no, these parts of it is missing. And then it comes back. There's a lot of, so for the first, first version to become the final version, the shorter time span is what needs to be looked into. Once that has been taken care of, then I think the next logical step is to provide drafting support, uh, support in terms of understanding the precedents which happened in the past, the knowledge management, because when a client is coming to a law firm, they're coming there, not just from an efficiency perspective, but the, the kind of experience and expertise that they have brought in through their years of working. Uh, so having a robust knowledge management tool, which can kind of create these kind of playbooks, precedent databases, uh, uh, is a second logical step that someone can take in their digital journey. Got it. Um, great. Uh, so all of that was very, very useful. Um, I just wanted to, I just wanted to just ask a little bit more about legal tech, right? And your opinion on that entire ecosystem. So what do you think is really the ecosystem like in India? And how do you think it will evolve in the next five to 10 years? So one aspect of legal tech um, that I see right now is that tools are thinking about themselves as siloed products, which is not going to work in the long run. I'm not uh, here advising that every product you come out with, you need to have a contract compliance, um, IPR, all these aspects. But if you, the, the stack way of uh, developing tools is going to be something which is prominent in the, the FinTech space and otherwise, that's an area that needs to be looked into because when tools think about it silo, you're not thinking about your customer experience because as a lawyer from a legal department or from a law firm, they're not just doing one dimensional work. There are multi dimensions that come into. Uh, so that needs to be taken into consideration. So a contract management that can talk to maybe a CRM software would matter a lot in the long run so that data has been organized better. Uh, you're able to have one centralized place where information is, uh, you know, uh, can be used and so on. So that's definitely one area. The second is um, there are some of very exciting tools out there in the market. What excites me about the tool is when they have dig deeper into how a lawyer actually performs their task. Mm -hmm. uh, so while developing the tool, getting these kind of data points, which is their existing user process, where they find challenges and so on. There are a lot of tools also getting developed right now, which is, again, in terms of what they want the, uh, the lawyers to do, which is not going to help in the long run because legal, at the end of the day, there's a lot of perspectives going on that AI is going to replace law uh, lawyers. But 
I personally don't think so. But any tool which can support the lawyers to do their job better is going to be a successful tool over here. The third aspect is um, legal technology. If we look at it, there is three dimensions that we can look into. One tool which increases your speed. So like I mentioned about the NDA example, generation of an NDA faster. That, that is a tool what it can do, where a lot of the tools right now in the market is able to do that. The second is where they give a structure. So like I mentioned how, you know, um, uh, the CRM or how you can use your relationship and the precedence and all those bits that come into the picture. But I think that the game changing tool would be those which have an intersection of not just structure, but data also, where you're helping your clients uh, analyze large sets of data in the past, which has happened and help them with insights, which can help them with their decision making at that point. Like for instance, let's say a, a legal counsel is drafting a, a procurement contract, which is around a machinery that they are going to procure. And there is something like a warranty period, which is coming in as a clause. Now, let's say the organization has a principle that the warranty is six months. But if there is data available for that lawyer that in the past, the machine has typically broken down in three months or four months, this helps the lawyer to get that insight that they need to draft the agreement in a way that they are able to save the company from a future risk. At this point, giving a documentation automation tool where they say six months, but you in your organization, it is two months and you change it to two months is not going to help you. But having real life data, which can be translated, which helps a lawyer in the long run is going to be some of the exciting tools, I would say, uh, coming out in this market. Got it. So, uh, Bala, you head the consultancy division at Babura, right? Can you maybe tell us what has been the most exciting or the most challenging project you probably worked on? And um, what were your learnings from it? So, due to confidentiality issues, we cannot talk about um, uh, some of the most challenging and unique <laughs> projects. But um, I would say strategic uh, uh consulting has been the most challenging uh, because the problems are unique uh, the solutions have to be handcrafted at the same time there needs to be a very strong data backing uh, those advice so it's not about what you think but it's about what has worked in the market and not worked in the market for example uh, we got an opportunity to work with a, a corporate legal department uh, from the internet sector. Now, the, the organization had international aspirations, so they were going global with the product and so on. Now, the GC who's been running the, the, the ship for three plus years wanted to reinvent the legal department. So, uh, so we got the opportunity to work with the general counsel. So this project had two sides to it. One was external. Because what we, like I mentioned, data is what our uh, advice or the backing comes from. So we help the general counsel understand how some of the large tech organizations, global tech organizations have structured their legal departments and why they have structured in that way and what works and what doesn't work. So that was kind of like a 30,000 feet view in terms of the market and so on. And that gives a, a lot of aha moments because they are like, oh, that's an interesting idea. I didn't think about it. So there was a lot of sharing of new ideas, sharing of best practices, which comes from there. So that was the external part where we gave the GC an external view. But at the same time, in reinventing your legal department, it's also important to consider what your internal stakeholders think about legal. So what we did over there was to have conversations with the business teams, with the sales teams, with the tech teams, to figure out how can legal be a business enabler. Uh, we went with the hypothesis that Legal is need, there is a need for legal to improve because that's what the general counsel has told us. What do you think are those areas where you think legal should improve? So there were ideas being spoken in terms of where they find legal can add more value, where efficiency can be brought in, where uh, advice or you know those, those kinds of custom experience can be more fine tuned in in that sense. We also had conversations with their internal legal team members because. Sometimes you don't need to go out in the world to find the answers. Your people sitting internally have the best answers or the, the most viable answer in that sense. So we spoke to the internal team members to figure out what they think we could do differently because this is what your business is saying. Uh, do you have a way that we could improve this particular aspect? So we collated all this information. We also looked at areas where they can uh, introduce legal technology 
because the, the the kind of volume based work especially how that can be used i mean how legal technology can be used for that volume based so that your lawyers are able to focus on those high strategy high value work and thereby creating that win win uh, you know customer experience for your your team and it all ended with us making a presentation to their board of directors and the uh, the, the the committees in terms of what legal should look like and we use the data from the external world the internal world and our uh, you know uh, analysis of all that to create it and now we are in the process of helping them implement those uh, action items that sounds very interesting bala so i also understand that bahura has a fellowship to sort of um get people more acquainted with the kind of things you're talking about right like how really does the business of law function and that fellowship sits on the intersection of business law and technology can you tell us a little bit about it so like i mentioned uh, bahura pioneered legal recruitment in 2007 and today we are 50 plus members but what we also realized is that with b- becoming a a, a mid sized organization in that size there are the complexities and issues that comes with it because uh, you know we we have a structure we need to bring in people within those structures and so on so fellowship was our way of being able to attract those multi competence multi dimensional talent who are there in the space who may not want to be part of a uh, an organization with its own you know uh, tracks going on but wants to create a separate track for themselves so this is our way of uh, meeting interesting people i would say that who have an interesting idea but also have a clarity in terms of how to achieve that uh, that idea to bring in on board for a, i mean sorry bring uh, to wahura for a, a specific period of time where we provide them support in terms of people market access uh, the data that they need and at the same time just opening up uh you know any kind of obstacles that would be there in their way in order for them to achieve that idea so uh, be it in the technology space be it and there are some so many unique perspectives which are coming from law students from people who are in the system who have that spark who thinks about the the market or the the challenges that we are facing today from a completely different perspective so this is our way of bringing them together and kind of enabling them into solving this problem that the market has that sounds like a great opportunity uh we we'll put all the links in the description of this video so that people can access this much more easily um one more thing i understand wala is that wahura also engages in legal operations consulting not just the tech products but generally on legal operations as well so before we jump into the consulting side of things can you maybe break down legal operations for our audience first so that's a great question um i think legal ops means different things to different people like for instance um, groups like cloc and acc have done a great work in defining legal co- ops co competencies which essentially cover five dimensions or themes like people tech service delivery data and uh, governance but how in bahura we like to see legal ops is building a core capability within your legal department which enables you to run a legal department like how you run a business so if you ask any successful ceo on what they think is the reason for their success you would have hear many many different perspectives but something which is very common would be that product or service to be successful it should be built with the customer experience at the core so we believe the biggest role of value that the legal ops mindset does for a legal department is to bring the their customer experience to the, the core activity so when i say running like a business it means doing everything within a legal department how a successful business would do which is keep reinventing yourself mm-hmm. uh, with the on the basis of how the your realities are changing and today's businesses are evolving at such a fast pace because there are new products new market uh you know new technology that get introduced on a on a regular basis and uh, legal departments which are conservative or let's say defensive or they are not uh, conventional or they are conventional in that sense are not able to keep pace or uh, keep you know track with that pace that that's happening so legal ops for for us means making that mind shift 
uh, a mindset shift that happens uh, within a GC where they are think, not thinking about their uh, department as a function or a service, but as a business unit catering to their needs of the, the legal department. So again, like I mentioned, it's a mindset shift that we uh, uh, provide and not uh, and just not just simply solving the problem that comes in front of them, but also anticipating the needs and uh, being a proactive over there. At the same time, when you think about a successful business, transparency and trust is also a very important parameter. That's another area where legal ops can provide more support to the general counsel, which is uh, vendor management, financial management, how you are running the legal department, how you're creating reports which can go into various committees, to your board of directors, to your CFOs, which would build trust in terms of how you're building your legal department, how you're running the ship, and also what kind of value you're able to provide. So these are areas which typically don't need a lawyer to do, but you need people with core capabilities to do. So legal ops, uh, consulting is all about looking into a legal department, thinking about new ways that this can be run like a business uh, unit, and then helping our clients in, in taking that journey. Um, I'm kind of intrigued, right? What kind of, what are first queries that clients usually have or, or what is uh, the tipping point in that sense, right? When a client realizes, oh, I think I need to now invest in legal operations. Could be uh, multiple things in, in that sense. Like for instance, a lot of our clients come to us by saying that uh, I have a fantastic team, but I feel like they're not happy with their work. Okay, that, that's usually one of the big problem statements that we hear, be it on the law firm side or be it. When we think of, when we hear that problem statement, the first thing that we think about is how can legal ops be brought in there? Because one reason why we feel talent doesn't, you know, enjoy the work they're doing is maybe they don't feel like the work is challenging enough or they are not able to see the value that they are able to, uh, you know, create for the larger organization or for your firm. What legal ops does is it looks into the various activities a lawyer does within the system, looks for those activities which are not generating direct client value. Like for instance, if you are involved in vendor management, typically be a banking finance organization or an IT, they work with a number of law firms. Now, if a lawyer is sitting and kind of managing that, that relationship and so on, they don't feel like it's a challenging work enough for them. So what we do over there is with legal of mindset coming into the picture, we take the vendor management aspect out of that role and we see if this needs to be played by a lawyer in the system or can there be a capability built in or can there be a change in the process or the tech intervention over there? Can we create a database where business have direct access to the kind of uh, law firms which have been already empaneled uh, the kind of feedback that they have got from the previous intervention that have happened and how to reach out to them. So you're creating, uh, you know, that again, the mindset shift happens where a lawyer is looked into where they can add direct value and those activities where they are not kind of, you know, um, uh, adding value to see how best way that that can be delivered. Got it. Uh, so that's very interesting. Um, I have one last question, which is since, you know, Vahura knows the entire talent market and just generally how the entire legal services market sort of functions in India. What do you think are the new emerging roles and opportunities in the legal industry uh, right now? Um, again, we see like, there is a lot of uh, uh, thought leadership happening in the international market, which we see India also being influenced. But at the same time, we're seeing some very unique roles coming in the market, like, for instance, legal data analyst roles, where there is, a, again, one dimension within the, the legal ops itself, where there is a team that is focusing on disintegrating the contract, which is getting executed, breaking it down into data sets, which then can be used by other teams to unlock it. Like for instance, if there is a, in your typical contract, let's say there's something on the revenue side. Uh, this usually sits with the legal in that contract document. 
but a legal data analyst role would be to take that revenue or any kind of tax implications or so on and put it into a, a system which then the finance team or the tax team can then access it. So legal data analyst roles are becoming prominent and it's an exciting career future for freshers and young legal professionals because they get to see the end to end of uh, the, the process itself. Legal tech roles, uh, legal tech companies are uh, in, the, in the space to hire. So we are seeing some very interesting roles coming with not just domestic legal tech players, but also international tech players where they're looking for lawyers who can not just be part of their delivery teams, but also can take on roles like sales, uh, business roles, technology roles, and so on. So that, that roles we are seeing, which is a little away from the, the traditional roles. Uh, innovation roles within law firms, uh, because as law firms are thinking about adding more value to their client, which is not just about providing that legal subject matter expertise, they are also helping lawyers, law, I mean, legal departments, their clients become better. So we have innovation departments coming within law firms who are not just looking at their internal efficiency, but also the external uh, efficiencies. Uh, integration of business and legal is going to be a, a, a new uh, aspect because one uh, you know, change or thought leadership we see happening is lawyers today handle the legal aspect of uh, you know, your contracts and so on, whereas the commercial uh, discussion, the negotiations all goes into a different team. But lawyers who are not just legal subject matter expertise, but also able to take on these commercial discussions is going to be a, a, a very interesting role, especially for some of the organizations where they are able to do end-to-end and they are able to add more value to, to their legal department. And then, like I mentioned, legal ops, which is not just looking at, okay, this is a legal ops COO, but there are different aspects of it that can be brought in. Uh, policy roles, uh, like I mentioned, we are now into tax compliance and policy. And these are some of the interesting roles which are coming out in the market. And policy, you, it can be position out of your legal department, but we also see a lot of general counsels who are bringing policy into their, uh, you know, KRAs and their strategic focus, because there is a good interplay between law and policy in that sense. Um, and yeah, these are some of the, the roles that we see. That's quite a list. So uh, thank you so much for all of that, Bala. That's all the questions I had for you today. Is there anything you'd like to add before we sort of close this interview? So um, one is definitely the, the kind of changes that we are seeing in this legal market. Um, I, think, I think it's a very important piece to kind of consider because, because we are in this talent market, we get a, a first front seat view of what's happening. One, definitely that there is a, a, you know, a, an interest by international law firms to hire India talent. Um, they can be positioned in Singapore, London, and creating these kind of because there is a, a there there is some good talent out there and law firms are thinking about you know hiring and in 2022 itself we have more mapped more than 50 such moves that are happening from Indian law firms to international law firms so that's definitely an area that I see uh, uh, changing. The second is where we are seeing a lot of MNCs in the financial institution space in the IT space creating extended legal departments in mm -hmm. India. Uh, so they are not, uh, they are able to send certain very high quality work uh, and not be in a process outsourcing kind of a business or it's not considered to be a step back, but they are servicing global businesses sitting out of India itself. Mm -hmm. So this is again, uh, where your clients are not just your Indian demographic uh, aspect, but you're servicing clients from your APAC, E -E -E US kind of markets and so on. And this we think is going to, uh, you know, be an interesting space to look out for. On the law firm side, we do see a lot of consolidation going to happen, especially in the, the tier two and the, the boutique side where they would be coming together of, uh, you know, like-minded and uh, similar understanding of the market and their aspirations. So we are helping a lot of these organizations in the, in the consolidation activities at this point. On the talent side, especially on the law firm, uh, it's, it's been seeing high attrition and our estimate is that attrition is going to continue. Uh, so at the end of this month, we are coming out with a, a study on best law firms to work, which 
earlier was only about finding the best law firm to work but we are also trying to figure out how the talent market is perceiving this uh, this law firm market so there would be a lot more analysis coming out uh, areas that we feel law firms should consider and you know should remove uh, from from their problem statements in order to add more value to their talent market and on the in house side we've seen the talent market exploding uh, during covid even pre covid uh, it was happening and it continues to happen because most of these companies are global from day one like i mentioned and for that having a good uh, structure within them where they can handle the legal compliance and other risk aspects and you know to be able to identify them at an early stage resolve those uh, risk and then help the organization survive is going to be a, a thing and we are going to continue to see the in house roles booming in this space i think that was a very holistic uh, like a almost like a 360 view of the indian uh, legal services market so thank you so much for that para and thank you for taking out the time and doing this interview with follow up today i think there's a lot like i was constantly taking notes <laughs> while speaking to you so it's been a great learning experience for me and i'm sure um others who tune in will also learn quite a bit um so yeah thank you so much and all the very best thank you, thank for, for all the new ventures <laughs> Thank you for this opportunity and uh, wishing you and Kolob all the very best. Thank you so much.